Red Skelton Show, number 1912. Air date, June 2nd, 1970. From Television City in Hollywood, The Red Skelton Show. Gentlemen, Red Skelton. Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I just heard something. A little boy, a little boy says, we're going to have your baby boy at our house. I said, really? How do you know it's going to be a baby boy? He said, remember last year when Mummy was sick, we had a little girl? Pop sick now. <laughs> hey, there was a police bulletin. A police bulletin just came over that in Fresno, there was a bank robbery this afternoon of a half a million dollars, and the bank robber ran away with a young girl, 19 years old. And I'd like to announce now, if that fella is watching this program at this moment... <laughs> With Dickens, huh? <laughs> hey, you know, I was reading something that surprised me the other day, that more people are taking up skydiving. You know, that's with parachutes, skydiving. Now, there's one fellow that says he goes out every weekend. He goes up on a plane just for relaxation. 
I says, for relaxing, what do you do during the week? He says, I drive a school bus. <laughs> I remember I was up in this little one motor plane a couple of weeks ago with Art Gilmore, our announcer. See, he's got a plane. As a matter of fact, the fellas in the band, they all have planes, and they do this skydiving stuff. The other day, we were up there. I was up there with Art, and I looked. He said, look out to the right. You want to see something funny? I look over there, and here is the trombone player in his little plane. And I look over there, and here comes David Rose in his plane on the right. And I look in the back of me, and here comes the piano player. <laughs> and he don't have a plane. <laughs> <laughs> hey, during the war, during the war, the paratroopers, they take Klim Kadiddlehopper up, see, and this, this uh, instructor gives out the, the, the commands. He says, now, oh, when you get 20,000 feet up, you bail out. Now, you pull the rip cord. You count 10, pull the rip cord. If that don't work, you pull the emergency cord. And now there'll be a fellow down the road about 20 miles with a motorcycle to pick you up and bring you back. So they go up. <laughs> Klim jumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom. Uh-oh. <laughs> pull the other one. That one don't work either. How do you like that? Be about my luck, the guy with the mortar tackle won't be there either. <laughs> hey, during the war, you're supposed to jump out of the plane and yell, Geronimo! So all these guys are jumping out of the plane yelling, Geronimo! And finally, the last guy jumps. Guy locks the door. About two or three minutes later, there's a knock on the door. He opens up the guy, the guy's hanging there. He says, what'd you say that Indian's name was? <laughs> The big, the big, uh, the big thing in, in skydiving, though, is to be careful where you land. Now, this one fellow landed in a barnyard, and he landed right on a nest of eggs. <laughs> and the rooster walked over and he says, uh, "Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I quit." <laughs> <laughs> but I have other hobbies. I have hobbies better than that. karate. I'm studying karate. See, with jokes like I tell you, you gotta have protection. <laughs> The whole secret of karate is that anytime anybody vicious comes up to you, well, the first thing you do is to go, hi! See? Now, if he don't go high back, you run like the devil. <laughs> you got to carry a karate card. I don't have mine with me. I, I studied karate, see? Now, uh, you, it's to protect yourself, see? This one guy, I see him getting fresh with a young lady, see? So I walked over. You're supposed to give him a cue. You're supposed to say, because you're licensed, you have to say, karate, karate. See, you have to let them know that you're an expert, see? or that you've got a black belt, or you get a black eye. <laughs> no, no. So I walked over to this guy, and I says, this big truck driver, and I says, karate! He says, monkey wrench! Boom! <laughs> I was walking down the alley the other night to get my car, see? And a, a big bruiser comes out, and he says, stick him up! Well, I gave a karate chop right to the heart, mine, to get it started. <laughs> yeah, come on, Gertrude and Heathcliff, Gertrude and Heathcliff. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay, he said, um, Christmas is good, um. <laughs> She says, my goodness, look at that big fat worm. He says, that's not a worm. That's the caterpillar that works at that topless joint down there. <laughs> <laughs> See, have you ever noticed that people that go in for parachute jumping uh, with a plane, uh, they're, they're called the skydivers, see? So uh, to jump without a parachute, you're called a <gasps> <laughs> I'd like to do now, if I may, a little pantomime of a fellow making his first dive from the sky. So naturally he's nervous, so he's brought along with him a bottle of tranquilizers, see? And the planes and pilots say, you know, thank you very much. You'll be promoted someday. <laughs>
And now, ladies and gentlemen, our special musical guest star, Miss Shirley Bassey. I'll bring you Red Skelton as Sheriff Deadeye and his guest star, Agnes Moorhead of Bewitched, in another stirring drama of the Old West entitled, He Wanted to Be a Square Shooter, but he found that his barrel was round. All right, everybody, drink up. Court's about to go into session. Why do you hold court in a saloon? Well, stranger, because Sheriff Deadeye owns the saloon. What does a judge have to say about that? Well, it so happens that Sheriff Deadeye is also the judge and the jury. <laughs> that don't seem quite honest to me. Well, of course it ain't. That's what gave Deadeye the idea. <laughs> well, in that case, I don't need these. Oh, what a shame. Good hand, too. Six aces. <laughs> All right, Charlie, you drunk again? Not again, yet! <laughs> How can you tell if I'm drunk? Because your breath is bleaching my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Who threw Charlie out? I did, did I? He's drunk. Well, sober him up so he can get drunk again. He's our best customer. <laughs> get him out of here. Let him rest back there for a minute. Oh, boy. Okay, bailiff. Let's get the court in order here. Let's All get the right. court in order. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. The court is now in session. Yeah, the court is Judge Deadeye is presiding. 
Order in the court. Order in the court. Here come the judge. <laughs> Order in the court. <laughs> I shot a gavel into the air. It fell the earth. I know not where. Oh! I know now. <laughs> Order in the court, order in the court. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, stop that. Yeah. Well, what's the first case on the socket? Docket. The first case? Get your oh. hands off of my head. Elmer Blunk versus Sheriff Deadeye. Blunk advanced to the bench. Okay, Blunt Habish, your corpus, and a pluribus, your unum. <laughs> I just wanted to prove that I knew about law. Get your hands off of my desk, will you? Now, don't try to get tricky with me, boy. What's your, um... Well, I was gonna say beef, but there ain't none left, is there? <laughs> What's your complaint? Well, you bought that painting of Beach Baby from me for $40, and you never paid me for it. I never paid... What do you say, one of you witness take the stand, will you? All right, let's cut for it. I guess it's me. You'll get a fair and square deal here, buddy. You promise to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? Nope. No? That, that's okay. He's on our side. <laughs> hey, Slim, yeah. did you see me pay this lying varmint $40 for that picture? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good enough for me, boy. That's good enough for me. Not only that, but you stole that picture. Can you prove it? I don't have to prove it. I'm the voice of justice around here. I'm sending you up to the big house. But, Your Honor, if... <laughs> Really? Well, to show you that I got mercy, before you go to the big house, I'll let you go to the little house. <laughs> Get your hands off of there. Take him out of here. You better go with him. What happened? Next case, next case. All right, the next case. Higby versus Osborne. The charge, assault and battery. Assault and battery. You ought to be ashamed of yourself beating up a little old lady like this. I didn't beat her up, did I? She beat me up. Oh, now that's ridiculous. I'd like to see that. Oh. Yeah! Yeah! And to think she's somebody's dear, sweet mother. <laughs> uh, what's your decision, Judge? Guilty, that's what it is. Guilty. Guilty of yeah. what, you dirty rat? Now, now, wait just a moment. You put another point on the thing here. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, case dismissed. Case dismissed. Goodbye, mother. <laughs> yeah, somebody's been spiking that old gal's geritol. You know that. <laughs> okay, court's adjourned. Court's adjourned. Yeah. Sheriff. Yeah, what's up? What do you think just got off the stagecoach and it's heading this way? I don't know. I've been in here all the time. Bertha Blue Nose. Bertha Blue Nose? Who Bertha Blue Nose? You don't know who Bertha Blue Nose is? Why, it's been on the news flashes all over the territory. Can't you read smoke signals? Can't see smoke signals anymore. White man brings smog. <laughs> no kidding. Here, sitting pretty, in he, huh? <laughs> she's that crackpot reformer. She's closing saloons all over the West. Well, she better not show her blue nose around here, or she's gonna have a face to go with it. Did I? You wouldn't hit a woman. I would, under one condition, if I was sure I could lick her. <laughs> you ever lick a woman? The Indian ain't allowed liquor. Yeah. <laughs> Wait about two minutes. Have you got a reservation? <laughs> huh? <clears throat> you just check in. No, then I just move in and then they uh, know I saw you I wasn't going to take it, so I mm -hmm. thought I'd help you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Do you hear them drums? What drums? <laughs> I hear them now. Damn you. <laughs> it's Bertha Blue Nose. It's Bertha Blue Nose.
Did I? What do you think? I think if more women looked like her, there wouldn't be so much sin and temptation. <laughs> Well, thank you, ma'am. Everybody down with some Now, listen to me, you sinners. Yeah? Oh! I say, listen to me. Give up your sinful ways. Turn your back on the evils of drink. Liquor is a curse. It makes a man fight with his wife. It even makes a man shoot at his wife. And even worse than that, he can get so drunk he can shoot and miss his wife. <laughs> Be Sheriff Deadhead. That's me. No, Dead Eye. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to take a vote on that? <laughs> you didn't miss it far, anyhow. <laughs> they, I'll have you know I got a reputation for leading a good, clean, wholesome life up to the age of six. Oh, bah! Yeah. Mm. Bah. Bah. Bah? Bah. Well, let's not get sheepish about this. <laughs> You wouldn't know what good, clean living is. That's what I say. What good is it? <laughs> now, why don't you get out of here and take the iron butterflies with you over there? Mind your manners, fluffy lips. Fluffy lips? <laughs> or I'll call in my bodyguard. Bodyguard? You mean with a body like that, you got a goat stealer? <laughs> She's got her bloomers on too tight. Oh. Okay, okay, no more, no more, no more. No more? I, I think I broke my arm. <laughs> Good. Now, uh, Mother, we uh, put this on her, uh, her booze tab, will you there? Yes. Now, we don't have a, a, a bouncer, so you're going to have to throw yourself out here. <laughs> well, that's getting things well in hand. <laughs> Watch out, get out of the road, here comes the stagecoach! Now that's the third stagecoach she's wrecked this week now! Bertha, baby, you and I are going to get along just fine. Well, you better take your tainted hands off me, dead eye, or I'll grab your tongue and pull you inside out. Well, the Reverend said everybody's more beautiful on the inside. <laughs> that's right! Oh, down, Reverend! <laughs> The only way you'd be beautiful inside would be inside a jail. The idea of serving liquor to an Indian. Oh, well, that, do you know what you could get for that? Yeah, five dollars a quart, yeah. <laughs> Besides, he ain't no Indian. He is? No, he's a Japanese friend of mine, had his eyes fixed. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Is it true? Are you a Japanese? Go ahead, Yamamoto. <clears throat> Tell him it's okay. Hug, uh, Mama-san. Mm, yeah, oh. yeah. Really? Who's Japanese? Japanese, indeed. Then you can just say sayonara to your sake. It's about time you poured me one. Just lay on the floor and lap it up, buddy. Take that. Uh. And that. Oh. And that. And that. And that. You know, our beer fights back. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. Did I? You're a scoundrel. I know all about you. You do? Yes. I happen to have seen your dossier. No. <laughs> My dossier, you see? Good heavens. Why, Bertha, you be careful how you talk around here. We have some of the you have, uh, customers from Pasadena, you know. <laughs> Well, I never heard of such a life of crime. You didn't? No, you have a perfect record of graft, bribery, larceny, and corruption. Well, you must have read my write-up in the reform school yearbook. <laughs> you know, when you were 10 years old, your parents ran away from you. Is that what happened to them? <laughs> and all the time, I figured they just went out for a beer and got crocked and couldn't find their way home. <laughs> if anyone had the right to drink, it would be your parents. Well, at least they got something to be thankful yeah. to me for. Says here, drinking has had quite an influence on the lives of your family. It certainly has. You know, when Paul was drunk, Ma wouldn't marry him. 
And when he was sober, he wouldn't marry her. <laughs> <laughs> you were also run out of town. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah, huh? I do. Yeah, yeah. Right. You were also run I'm out of town. I'm glad somebody did. <laughs> <laughs> Just count on me. Yes. yes. So well, you one, were... two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Yeah. You were also run out of town for hobnobbing with the James brothers. Hobnobbing with the James brothers? Yes. The brothers? The that long hair sure fools you, don't you? <laughs> and after all the chocolate milkshakes I bought for him. So when I get through with you, did I? Mm. You'll be out of office, this den of iniquity will be closed, and you will be in jail. Oh, I don't think so. We got... Oh, a customer. Sheriff, I caught Bart Black here, and I'm claiming the $5,000 reward. Oh, you're a bounty hunter, huh? Yep, he's mine, and I'm collecting that 5000 I think we're going to have a little mutiny on the bounty here. <laughs> hey, uh, what makes you think you're going to live that long? Well, what do you mean, what makes me think I'm going to live that long? <laughs> that! Oh, oh. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. It's right? all right. <laughs> You are a bounder. I'm going to be a rich bounder, though. Boy, I'm going to collect that $5,000. <laughs> no, you're not, Sheriff. You're not collecting any $5,000. I'm innocent, and I can prove it. Are you sure of that? I'm positive. Now, only fools are positive. Are you sure of that? I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here you are. There you are. Oh. There's another belly button for you. <laughs> What are you making, a pilot? <laughs> Come on, hurry up and die, or we're going to run into the governor and JJ. <laughs> yeah, fly out the window there, will you? Come on, hey, huh? <laughs> Boy, he's big. He just put a dent in the mattress back there. <laughs> yeah. I can't have him dying in here, you see. It makes the floor too sticky for dancing. Why did you kill him? Well, I had to. He just cheated me out of my $5,000 reward, the dirty rat. <laughs> now, look here, Bertha. Let's you and I be friends. We can get along, all right? What do you say we have a little drink together? Well, I don't drink, and I don't compromise with the devil. Now, you might be the law around here, but I have friends who are higher... Who, uh, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. What did she do? <laughs> well, what happened to her? I think she just sprung one of her corset stays and it stabbed her, I think. <laughs> no, no, it, it was something to do with that picture that upset her. Yeah, it did. Hey, there is something familiar about it. I wonder if old Bertha could have been the one to, to pose for old Beach Baby there. Oh, are you kidding? Why, well, she's, she's 25 years older. Well, it could have been painted 25 years ago. No, it, it can't be her. Why not? Well, she ain't got no rose in her mouth. Really? I can not remember. <laughs> well, how about that? Well, maybe it ain't her. She could have swallowed it. Bertha, you mean that's really you? Well, I posed for it years ago, before I saw the light. Oh, my stars, Bertha. You led a wild, misspent youth. Wild, but not misspent. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got to get that picture out of here. If anyone discovers it, my reputation and our reform movement will be ruined. And there goes the collection. Ah, oh, you might have to hop that horn. Yeah, they are. Just fill that right in a seat. Sweeten it up a little. Oh, Sweeten yeah. it up a lot. This is good thinking, Dead Eye. Yeah. You're going to tell her this is tea. Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to loosen her tongue. Yeah, loosen her tongue. This rot gun's going to loosen her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> if I can just prove that old Bertha posed for that picture, I can blackmail her right out of the West. <laughs> blackmail her right out of the West. <laughs> we got that last line off of Gunsmoke, <laughs> which is now in third place. <laughs> There's a ghost town down the road about two miles. Why don't you two spooks go down there and sign up? <laughs> yeah, go on, you penguins. Get out of here, will you? <laughs> hey, Bertha, how about you and me having a little conference over a cup of tea here? Well, mm. I 
don't know why not. After all, whatever I have against you is strictly personal. Yeah. Well, now, that's a subtle way of putting it. <laughs> ah, there. Here, allow me to pour. Allow me to pour. That's a little thing that I learned while I was in Japan. You hold a thing like that. They do strange things over there. You know they bathe together over there? No. Yeah, and they have those massage parlors. And uh, girls run across your back. Oh. One did mine during a raid, of course. But, <laughs> you know I get a kick out of that, that little teapot there. See the nose of the thing with that one little drop on it? Yeah. You know why I get a big kick out of that? No, why? I know it can't go... <laughs> Yeah, well, here's to you. Here's mud in your eye. Here's oolong in your eye. Oh, now that's delightful, isn't it? <sighs> Why do people have to drink <sighs> when tea is so refreshing? <sighs> you got a frog in your throat? If I had, he's croaking. <laughs> you know, did I? I don't believe I've ever tasted tea like this. Yeah. Uh, is it a blend? It's a blend, all right. <laughs> It's uh, one part oolong and nine parts panther juice. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I think I was going to say it. <laughs> well, it is yummy. Isn't it yummy, yeah, though, huh? Yummy. Yeah. Well, I don't know why this kid wants to go around closing up saloons. <laughs> why, she could keep them open single-handed. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. How would you like to make a little money? Hmm? Well, now, that sounds like it's in my category. Well... Hmm. We got mine. Well, um... Uh, I, um... Uh, I'm an art collector. Yeah. <laughs> you got class, I'll say that. <laughs> When you held that pot up, I noticed your little pinky was out there. <laughs> You're a pretty good food collector, too, isn't yeah. you? Well, anyway, I'm interested in buying one of your paintings. One of the paintings? Oh, yeah. Which one do you like? Well, they're all very nice. Ain't they nice? But how about that one called uh, Beach Baby? Yeah, how about that one, huh? <laughs> That's an antique. That's over 100 years old. Why, that couldn't be. I'm only 39. <laughs> Mark it down from 50. Yeah. <laughs> Here, uh, Bertha, would you what? do me a favor? Would you say, ah? Uh, ah? Uh, it's her! It's the beach baby! It's her! It's the beach baby! Quiet! 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 Did I, you're a gentleman. You won't tell anybody, will you? Well, let's put it this way, beach baby. By the sea, by the sea. By the beautiful sea, oh what fun, oh what fun this blackmailing will be. It's her! It's her! Little dance hole girl! How do you like that? Did I? Did I? That painting could ruin me. And that's why I'm gonna keep it. But someone else might see it and recognize me. Well, I'll tell you what. To show you that I'm a gentleman, I'll hide it. I'll hide it. There we are. There. <laughs> You know, you're not the only beach baby around. Egad, Mother, there's the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> yeah, so, Dead Eye, you still refuse? You I, still refuse to sell me the picture? I refuse. I say it from the bottom of my little old blackmailing heart. I ain't gonna give it to you. Well, then there's only one thing I can do. What's that? I must play my trump card. Yeah? I'm going to bewitch you. You ain't going to bewitch me long, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and I'm going to cast a spell upon you. Huh? Mmm. Bees, knees, and uncles, fleas. You will do as I do, please. Goodbye, evil. Hello, good. You'll be pure as all men should. Hallelujah! I see the light! I see the light! Repent! Repent! Close this den of the quickity! The quickity! The quickity! Hell of a Repent! Repent! I just made up a new word! Thank you! See how they come to you when you got faith! Repent, you sinners! Out! Everybody out! Close this place! Get out of the feet! Out! Get going, girls! Get going! Hallelujah! Bartender. <laughs>
Yes, ma'am. Would you uh, let me have another cup of that tea? Bertha, no more tea for you. Well, just one for the road. I'm sorry, the road is closed. <laughs> I asked Miss Agnes Moorhead if there was such thing as, as witches, and she said in a very dignified manner, eh. <laughs> Personally, I don't believe in witchcraft. <laughs> I don't think they can play tricks on you. <laughs> Once again, ladies and gentlemen, our musical guest star, Shirley Bassey. Society loves to state with great sobriety There's no girly like the Shirley we know Go, yo, no, though we spent our nights pursuing her Ever since we saw her doing her dance We haven't a chance You may fall apart the moment you squeeze her But don't lose your heart, she's only a teaser So remember all you men, there's no mistake in her Ask us when she will be making her bow the answer is now. We're all alone, no chaperone can get our number. Who was in slumber? Let's misbehave. Da -da -da. There's something wild about your child that's so contagious. Let's be outrageous. Let's misbehave. Da -da. When Adam won his hand, he wouldn't stand for teasing. He didn't care about those apples out of season. They say that spring means just one thing to little love birds. We're not above birds. Let's misbehave.
Don't go away. Red will be back in a minute. Here he is again, Red Skelton. I would like to thank our sponsors and staff, and especially you, ladies and gentlemen, for allowing me to be a part of your evening. So until next week, we'll say good health, good life, and may God bless. Thank you. Don't you cry when you learn that we're done today and we have to travel on. Because we plan to return for another stay when a week has come and gone. Red's guests will be Vincent Price and Frank Sinatra, Jr. This is Art Gilmore speaking.